Hello everyone and welcome to another Wolf Electronic webinar. My name is Markus Eberle and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar. Yeah, today's topic is increase the senses with our 6-axis MEMS IMU sensor. Our speaker today is Ratan Kotipali, who is product manager at Wolf Electronic in the field of wireless connectivity and sensors. He will hold today's webinar, uh, he will hold today's presentation. Yeah, before we start into the webinar, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during this webinar. This means that you cannot ask us questions via the microphone. You also can see that we are today here in the uh, studio directly here in Waldenburg and we are recording this webinar. That means for your questions, you can ask us your questions with the chat function. You can find that in the webinar control panel and we will answer them in the next days. You will also have the opportunity to ask us your questions via our email webinarteam at we-online.com. We are happy to support you there. So the presentation today will be about 30 minutes and after the presentation, we will just get lead to a quick um, to a quick feedback survey. Of course, we are pleased if you took the time to participate in our survey and help us to improve our webinars. Yeah, after the webinar in the next few days, we, you will also receive the link to the presentation as well as to this recording via email. So. Now I will hand over to our speaker, Ratan, and I wish you an exciting webinar. Thank you very much, Marcus, for the nice introduction. So I'm Ratan Kotipali, uh, the product manager for IMU Motion Sensors at Wuth Electronics. Most of you might be aware that uh, in the past years, Wuth Electronics has uh, released the three-axis accelerometer sensor. And it's quite a successful product from our product portfolio and uh, customers are quite satisfied and they also have a, a request that they wish to ha also have a six axis IMU sensor from our product portfolio. We have taken this request uh, from the customer uh, into account and we have worked on it. And finally, most recently, we have launched our six axis IMU sensor, which is nothing but the VSEN ISDS sensor. So in this today's webinar, I'm going to provide a very basic understanding of the IMU sensor and what the what it offers, what kind of key features it can offer us. And then we can conclude the presentation with some very basic industrial IoT applications. So let's switch into the presentation. So uh, to start with today's agenda, the presentation is basically structured into three main parts. In the first part, we will be mainly covering the concepts regarding the IMU sensor. What does it actually consist of? Well, this can be basically explained by using a simple block diagram and the working principle of both accelerometer and gyroscopes. Then we move on to the second part, which is nothing but a discussion on some key technical parameters, specifications, features, and characteristics of the ISDS sensor. In the third part, which is also the last part of this presentation, we will be covering some industrial IoT applications, which is offered by the ISDS sensor. And finally, then we can conclude the webinar with some frequently asked questions. So to start with, what is an IMU sensor? The IMU sensor is basically an inertial measurement unit, which consists of an accelerometer to measure the specific force or acceleration and a gyroscope to measure the angular rates. And sometimes optionally, it can also include a magnetometer to measure the magnetic field surrounding an object. For example, if one considers only an accelerometer in X, Y, and Z direction, it's called as three axis IMU sensor, like our previously released uh, VSEN ITDS sensor. And if one considers both accelerometer and also gyroscope together in one single unit, and it's called as a six axis IMU sensor. To even go even further, if one adds an additional magnetometer to a six axis IMU sensor, then it's considered as a nine axis IMU sensor. Now let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> 
In this slide, we discuss the basics of an acceleration. By definition, acceleration is nothing but the measurement of a change in velocity, and it's equal to the difference between the initial and final velocities normalized with respect to time. An accelerometer is a MEMS element, which is nothing but we call microelectromechanical system, is a micro machine structure built on top of a silicon wafer. An accelerometer output signal is typically mesh specified and measured as a plus or minus g, where 1g is equal to 9.8 meters per second square. An accelerometer consists of an immense capacitive element inside the integrated circuit. In this slide, we discuss the principle of acceleration. Let's assume a scenario that a mass m is attached to a spring with the spring constant k and is fixed to a rigid wall. Now let's assume the mass m is experiencing a force f in the x direction as demonstrated in the figure. Then according to Hooke's law, the force f can be represented by spring constant times the linear displacement x. On the other hand, the same experiment can be interpreted with Newton's second law, that is force is equal to mass times acceleration. Equating the two equations for acceleration, we get acceleration is equal to the spring constant k normalized by the mass times the displacement x. This clearly demonstrates that the acceleration caused due to the force f on the mass is equal to the inverse of the displacement vector x. The key takeaway point from this slide is acceleration and linear displacements are correlated. So let's move on to the next slide. From the previous slide, it's clear that the acceleration measurement is possible by measuring the displacement. Now the real question is how do we actually measure this displacement? We have different techniques to measure the displacement like the resistive, inductive and capacitive sensing techniques. Our six axis ISDS is based on capacitive sensing technique and will be the focus of this presentation. From the spring mass setup discussed earlier, if we set up two parallel plates, let's say PF being the fixed plate and PM being the mobile plate, and the distance between these two plates is given by X, as shown in the figure, the displacement X can be measured by measuring the capacitance between the two plates. We also know that the capacitance between two plates is given by the formula capacitance is epsilon times A, normalized by the distance between the two plates, that is the distance between the fixed plate and the moving plate. And capital A here represents the area between the two plates. If we plug and reshuffle the previously derived acceleration formula from the previous slide, which is given as acceleration is spring constant K normalized by mass times the displacement X and the capacitance formula, we can establish a relationship between the capacitance, acceleration, and displacement. So uh, let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> In this slide, we go deeper into the accelerometer's sensor block diagram. Moving from left to right, firstly, the acceleration along the three axes, X, Y, and Z, can be measured by the MEMS capacitor unit as shown in the figure. And this signal is fed into the ASIC circuitry. Moving on, the ASIC circuitry basically consists of a voltage buffer for impedance matching purpose, a demod demodulator for carrier signal removal, and a multiplexer for, for multiple signals to single output signal. The resultant signal is fed into a other signal processing units like the amplifier for signal boosting, an analog to digital converter, and finally, some filter chains for more selections. The embedded functions and control logic units will enable the smart functions that are pre-programmed by the user. The final sensor data from the output register can be accessed through an I2C or SPI digital communication interface using the host processor. In this slide, let's see how a MEMS accelerometer works. As we discussed earlier in the previous slides, the MEMS accelerometer is a micro-machined structure that is built on top of a silicon wafer. 
The structure consists of a fixed plates, also known as anchors, a suspended proof of mass, also known as movable plate, and polysilicon st springs that allows the structure to deflect when acceleration along the x, y, or z axis is detected. As a result of deflection, the capacitance between the fixed plates and the movable plates attached to the spring structure changes. The change in capacitance is proportional to the acceleration along that particular axis, and the sensor processes this change in capacitance and converts it into an analog output voltage. With this slide, we understand the basic operating principle of an acceleration sensor. Now let's move on to the concepts of gyroscope. So the first thing that comes into our mind is what are gyroscopes and what can they actually measure? While accelerometers measure the linear acceleration, gyroscopes can measure angular rotations and orientations of an object. Gyroscopes adds an additional dimensional to the information supplied by the accelerometer sensor by tracking the rotation and twist. As we discussed earlier, accelerometer and gyroscopes together are considered as a six-axis IMU sensor which is nothing but an electronic device that can measure and report a body's specific gravitational force, angular rate, and rotation. To accomplish this, gyroscopes actually measure an imaginary force that is generated due to Coriolis's effect. In this slide, we can see the basic block diagram of MEMS capacitive-based gyroscope that can actually measure angular rotation along all the three axes, X, Y, and Z. We can see that the system consists of a pair of capacitors for each given axis, followed by a multiplexer, ASIC circuitry, and a signal processing unit, similar to the accelerometer's block diagram discussed before. The gyroscope sensor is integrated with an internal temperature sensor in the MEMS die for self-test functionality purpose to regulate any temperature-related sensitivity and drift issues. The final sensor data from the output registers can be accessed through an I2C or SPI digital communication interface using the host microprocessor. In this slide, we will be discussing the Coriolis principle using a conventional vibratory spring mass system. The system operates on the basis of an energy transfer mechanism from driving mode to a sensing mode. And also the system consists of a proof of mass M placed in the XY plane as shown in the figure. KX and KY are the spring constant coefficients along the X and Y directions respectively. Next, the X axis here represents the driving mode of the system, Y axis represents the sensing mode, and the Z axis represents the rotational axis. We should note that the x-axis is also excited by a reference driving force, f-drive, with an amplitude and frequency as the excitation signal. Now let's assume a scenario where an angular rotation is applied along the z-axis as shown in the figure. This will result in a displacement of the mass m along the x and y axis as shown in the figure. A Coriolis force appears in the drive and sense mode, that is, in along x and y axis given by fcx and fcy respectively. However, measuring fcy is of our interest in this given particular setup. So from this configuration, we can say that acceleration applied along the driving axis, that is the x axis, and ro angular rotation applied along the z axis causes a displacement of the mass m in the sensing axis, that is, y-axis. And this is due to an imaginary Coriolis force acting on the mass m. The displacement in the sensing axis can be sensed using a capacitive technique, and the displacement itself is a proportional to the angular rotation app applied on the z-axis. Now let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, we will discuss briefly how the spring mass gyroscope concept discussed in the previous slides are implemented on a silicon wafer using MEMS micromachining. The system consists of a base silicon substrate with micromachine top pattern using advanced lithographic techniques. 
The system also consists of proof of mass M placed above the silicon substrate as shown in the figure. It also have a driving sensing electrodes and suspension support beams with four supporting pillars. The driving system consists of an oscillator with a fixed amplitude and frequency, typically of one megahertz, applied along the x-axis. Then the proof of mass behaves like an oscillator along the x-axis. Additionally, if we apply an angular rotation along the y-axis, either in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, there will be an imaginary force, which is also called as Coriolis's force, that acts along the z-axis, that is, the sensing axis. The sensing electrode detects the Coriolis's force that is produced by the mixture of driving momentum in the x-axis and external rotation in the y-axis. And a measure of this displacement along the sensing axis can actually provide the angular rotation rate. In this slide, we will be discussing what is this Coriolis effect and the imaginary force that is acting on the mass M. The Coriolis effect states that when a mass M is moving in a specific direction, let's assume x-axis in this particular example with a velocity v, and an external angular rate omega applied along the y-axis, as shown in the figure, the Coriolis effect generates an imaginary force that causes the mass to move perpendicularly, that is, in the z-direction. The magnitude of this displacement of the mass m in the z-direction is actually related to the angular rate that is applied in the y-direction. In this slide, we'll go one step closer to the tuning for configuration with MEMS implementation, and also understand how the capacitive sensing is actually performed. Consider two masses oscillating in opposite directions at a constant velocity as shown in the figure. Additionally, when an angular rate is applied that is along the y-axis in this particular scenario. The Coriolis effect produced by each mass will be in opposite direction, that is in z plus and z minus directions. This will result in a change in capacitance between the two masses. By measuring this change in capacitance, the angular rate can be calculated the change in capacitance can be measured by considering the moving mass as the top plate and beneath a fixed bottom plate, thus making it a parallel plate capacitance configuration as discussed in the previous slides and also as shown in the top right of this slide. In this slide, the figure demonstrates the capacitive sensing element, that is, how the parallel plates actually converts a given motion to an electronic readout. For this, we have two different scenarios and cases. As we can see on the left-hand bottom, when no angular rotation is applied, the distance between the top mobile plate and the bottom plate do not actually change, and the resultant capacitance, that is the delta C is equal to zero. On the other hand, the right side bottom schematic demonstrates the case when an angular velocity is applied and how the MEMS capacitive parallel plate setup actually changes the distance between the plates due to the underlying Coriolis force. We can clearly see that one mass deflects from the bottom plate and a contrary effect is seen for the other setup. The difference in this capacitance is actually a direct measure of the angular rotation applied. So moving ahead, now let's look into the possible operating configurations and modes of the ISDS sensor. One thing I wish to convey from this slide is that ISDS offer a great flexibility to the end user in choosing the operating configurations and modes. The sensor basically works independently and also in combined modes. That is, only accelerometer can be activated and gyro in power down mode, or gyro can be activated and accelerometer in, in power down mode, or both the sensors can be actually in activation mode with, a, with independent output data rates. Such a great flexibility is possible 
where the users can really customize for their own applications and the power management, uh, especially for I IoT applications. Similarly, when it comes to the operating modes, we have four different modes as shown in the slide. The power down mode is the complete off mode, the low power, high power, and normal modes. Additionally, the gyro sensor can also be set in sleep mode to reduce its power consumption. Which is more about the power consumption and noise density characteristics of ISDS sensor. The idea is to convey to you all that even if the user chooses high performance mode in combo mode, that is like both gyro and accelerometer uh, in operation and in active mode, with a given specific ODR, the current consumption is still very low. This is a great takeaway point from this slide. Since this actually indeed opens door for a wide range of IoT applications and especially for industrial environments where power management and sense of fusion takes place and power consumption is quite critical. Next, when it comes to the noise density for a given test conditions, for example, for both acceleration sensor and the gyroscope, as it can, we can see in the, in, the, in the right table, we can clearly see that the noise density is extremely low even under extreme test conditions. That is, for example, 16G here. This is an important parameter to be considered since we don't wish the noise signal that gets higher and fades the real sensing signal that, that needs to be measured. Let's have a, a deeper look at the specifications of the ISDS sensor. It's a very tiny compact sensor with a dimensions of 2.5 by 3.0 by 0.86 mm with 14 pin land grid array packaging with a full scale reading FSR for acceleration of up to plus or minus 16G and for gyroscope up to plus or minus 2000 DPS degrees per second along with a 16-bit resolution for both acceler accelerometer sensor, gyro sensor, and even for temperature sensor. The user can choose wide range of current consumption modes, that is low, normal, and high. And even in high performance mode, the, con the current consumption is just 690 microamps, which is perfectly suitable for most of the industrial IoT applications. Next, the ODR rates are very high and can go up to 6.6 .6 .6 kilohertz with a bandwidth for accelerometer of up to 1400 Hz and 937 Hz for gyro. Finally, the sensor is stable for wide range of operating temperatures, that is between minus 40 degrees to positive 85 degrees. Now let's look into the futures of the ISDS sensor. User can select wide range of operating modes, that is high, normal, and low, as we discussed before. A larger FIFO of 4 kilobytes, two interrupt pins for smart embedded functions, both I2C and SPI communication, and inbuilt embedded fun smart functions. Finally, let's see the possible few applications uh, the sensor can offer. The sensor is aimed for industry of 4.0 and IoT applications in mind. It can also measure low static G acceleration applications like platform and antenna stabilization localization and navigation purposes, especially for tools and equipment in warehouse, logistics and AGVs. Finally, all moving objects like robotic arms, drones, and automation equipment. In this slide, we see why the ISDS is suitable for industrial IoT applications. Firstly, the sensor is very small in dimension and therefore it's easy for integration. Next, the ISDS offer a wide range of operating modes, that is the combo modes, only gyro and only accelerometer, hence a greater flexibility for the customer. Next, ISDS offers one of the best FIFO buffers with four kilobytes of storage, thus less intervention of the microcontroller, resulting in low power consumption. Then follows the ISDS offers I2C serial communication protocol, so it can be interfaced with RF radio modules. Then finally, ISDS offers two interrupt pins for notifications or triggering an event. This allows the user to access the wide range of embedded features. Uh, let's have a look at the inbuilt embedded functions that ISDS offers. ISDS offers wide range of smart embedded functions uh, like active inactive, sleep and wake up, free fall, tap functions, and orientation. 
the active inactive recognition function allows reducing system power consumption and developing new smart applications. When the active inactive recognition function is activated, the ISDS device is able to automatically reduce the sampling rate and only increasing the accelerometer's ODR, the output data rate and bandwidth as soon as an event is detected. With this feature, the system can be very efficient switching from low power consumption to full, per full performance and vice versa. Next, we move on to the free fall future. The free fall future here refers to the recognition when the device is in free fall case. That is, the acceleration measured along all the three axes, X, Y, and Z, goes to zero. In a real case, free fall zone is defined around zero G, where all the accelerations are small enough to generate an interrupt signal. The threshold parameters that defines the amplitude of G and the duration parameter will define the minimum duration of the free fall interrupt that needs to be recognized. Then next, we move on to the sleep wake up future. The wake up future can be implemented by the user either by using the accelerometer slow filter or digital high pass filter. The wake up interrupt signal is generated if a certain number of consecutive filtered data exceeds the configured threshold that is set by the user. Moving on to the next slide. Here we will be discussing about the, the 60 smart embedded function of the ISDS. Six orientations of the device in a space can be detected. The interrupt signal is activated when the device switches from one orientation to the other. Here the 60 interrupt is generated when for two consequential samples, only one axis exceeds a selected threshold that is set by the user. And the acceleration values measured from the other two axes are lower than the threshold set by the user. The 4D direction function is a subset of the 6D function, especially defined to be implemented in mobile devices. The Z axis position detection is disabled in the 4D mode therefore reducing the orientation recognition to the first four cases shown in the slide. In ISDS, the tilt function allows detecting when an event change occurs. In this slide, tilt detection interrupt signal is enabled when the device orientation from the start position number zero is, is rotated by an angle that is greater than 35 degrees from the start position. After the first tilt detection interrupt signal is generated, the new start position, let's say start position number one, corresponds to the position where the previous interrupt was generated, that is the final position zero. And the next interrupt signal will be generated as soon as the device is tilted by an angle that is greater than 35 degrees. Next, we move on to the FIFO buffer of the ISDS sensor. ISDS offer FIFO, which is first in first out buffer. The presence of FIFO buffer uh, allows consistent power saving for the overall application or the overall system. Since the microprocessor does not need continuously pull data from the sensor, but it can wake up only when needed and burst the significant data out from the sensor FIFO. ISDS offer up to four kilobytes of FIFO, as mentioned before. ISDS offer a wide range of buffer modes. For example, user can consider FIFO mode if the end aim is to reduce the power consumption. Bypass mode, if, if no data, uh, in this case, like no data will be uh, feeded into the buffer and the data is directly bypassed to the data registers. Next, if one chooses a continuous mode, one can replace the old data with the new incoming data. And if one chooses bypass to continuous mode, which starts buffering after an event is triggered and then continues to FIFO mode, stores information about an event that has occurred. So let's move on to the next slide. In this slide, we will see some of the possible applications of our ISDS sensor that can cater to the market. To start with, the six-axis IMU sensors can be used in construction industries, 
for bridges, buildings, skyscrapers, cranes, etc. In HVAC, moving parts and systems. It can also be mounted on earth movers and parts and cranes. In rotational and factory equipment parts, elevators and escalators, pick and place machines, industrial and rubber, commercial robots, modern warehouse logistics like AGVs, AMRs and logistic belts, and of course also for predictive and timely conditional monitoring. In this slide, we will conclude our presentation with some summary of the product features. So our new vSEN ISDS 6-axis IMU sensor is a MEMS-based capacitive element with excellent technical specifications like resolution, smart FIFO, high bandwidth, output data rates, full-scale readings for both gyro and accelerometer. It is very well suited for industrial IoT applications where high mechanical shocks, harsh operation conditions, along with low current consumption capabilities with larger FIFO buffer for sense of fusion and IoT connected devices. Finally, Wood Electronics provide an unmatchable service and support to the customers in accelerating their product to prototyping by providing the SDKs, the software development kits, evolution boards, and application notes. Before wrapping up uh, today's webinar, I would like to answer a few frequently asked questions that are raised by our customers. So the first question is, do we have SDK files available in the GitHub? And uh, the answer is yes, we have um, standard C drives and some examples for ISDS device already existing in the vISOS GitHub repository. The second question is, how is the accelerometer sensitivity measured? It's quite straightforward. The accelerometer sensitivity value is measured giving a known stimulus, let's say typically 1G to the device and then basically rotating up and down and finally subtracting any offsets. What is the purpose of the internal temperature sensor? The main purpose of the internal temperature sensor is to um, compensate for any kind of temperature drift in, in other sensors, like for example in gyro or in accelerometer, by an internal offset calibration. In such cases, the absolute accuracy of the temperature sensor is not very important and only the stability and resolution is important. The fourth question is, what's the main difference between the ISDS and the ITDS accelerometer? Well, um, from spec point of view, um, the full scale reading of plus or minus 16G up to plus or minus 16G are the same for both ITDS and the ISDS. Whereas uh, when it comes to the output data rate, ISDS have better um, ODRs uh, up to up to 6.6 .6 kilohertz, uh, whereas ITDS uh, is it's only uh, up to 1600 hertz. I would say this is a main difference. And from operational point of view, of course, ITDS is just an uh, accelerometer, whereas ISDS is both accelerometer along with a gyroscope. Is the aging of the sensors taken into account? Um, yes, for our internal qualification purposes, we have performed accelerated uh, tests for approximately 1,000 hours on selected quantity of samples, like HT oil, uh, UHAST, and unbiased temperature humidity and uh, temperature bi bi humidity bias tests were performed. So finally, I would like to thank you very much for your attention, time, and interest in this webinar, and Marcos, handing over to Waldenberg. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Ratan, for your interesting presentation. Yeah, now you have the opportunity to ask us your questions via the chat function, as yeah, said in the beginning. So um, you also have the opportunity to ask us your questions via the shown email addresses here. So um, we will answer them via we will answer them in the next few days. So yeah, we will keep you updated. So thank you very much for your attention today. Thanks again, Ratan, for your time today and your presentation. Have a good time. Bye.